Hey everybody, I'd just like to ask you to hang around after the main feature is over and I have a little studio chat. The main feature here runs pretty long, a little over 40 minutes, but I'll cut the studio chat short and just kind of catch you up on a few things. It was Saturday and there were several organized activities to engage the wanderers today. This included a drive visiting a few of the highlights around this part of Utah, a hike out to Moonhouse Ruin on Cedar Mesa, and a trip to Moab to a take on Hell's Revenge off-road trail. Of course, there was always the option to remain in camp and spend the day relaxing, or at least one could hope it would be a relaxing day.
crews that are going to hike out to Moon House have departed us and we are heading out to the highway straight ahead and we've roughed out a little plan to get us back to Nazoni campground with uh, some dirt roads in there. Some nice boulders here. So I'm getting ready to get out of the Jeep and look at. We are departing Gooseneck State Park. Got to look at Goosenecks and get a little bit of lunch. After departing Gooseneck State Park, we returned to the road on the west side of Combe Ridge that we drove earlier that morning. Except this time, instead of turning west onto Cedar Mesa, we continued on the west side of Combe Ridge to Highway 95, then returned along the east side of the ridge to Highway 163.
right back down. The power of dynamite. I thought you said, Joe, I want to jump in the, in the river. Well, I'll get you if you want. Want to go next? Eric, or you want to jump in? I'm good. Go ahead. Rough here. There's a little bit of space here to pull off. Tires at a time, huh? Two at a time. And we are back on the highway headed towards a landing. There we'll go to that nice honey. Call it a day. With both the day and a gathering of wanderers nearing their respective ends, we eagerly awaited the return of our fellow adventurers. After parting ways with the rest of the group, our 12 hikers decided we'd continue driving to the lower trailhead via a short four-wheel drive road. Upon reaching the lower trailhead, we set out on foot and followed a well-marked path of large cairns nearly a quarter mile to the edge of McCloyd Canyon. McCloyd Canyon was well worth the hike in itself, but upon reaching the canyon rim, we found a steep descent. It was a bit challenging for some of the hikers, and six of us decided to turn around, and six of us decided to continue. With some teamwork, we managed to make it through a few obstacles, get to the bottom of McCloyd Canyon, and make our way up to the Moon House. After reaching the 700 to 800 year old site, the group quickly dispersed and began to explore a quarter mile ledge housing almost 50 rooms of the Moon House ruins. Peeking into the windows of these rooms was like peeking into the ancestral Pueblo and way of life. And peeking out and looking into McCloyd Canyon, it was easy to see why they called this place home. After we explored the Moon House area, we made the steep ascent back to the canyon rim, met up with the rest of the group, made our way back to the trailhead. Before departing, Matt asked if we had time for one more stop. He had something special in mind for us. There you go. I feel so much safe in there. 
pounds off weighed me. Did you know you're 254 pounds? I said, uh, no, I do now. <laughs> <laughs> Just get rid of it. Okay. It had been a beautiful and sunny day all day for our hike, and now we found ourselves on a short road taking us out to Mealy Point. Upon reaching the point, we found something special that I don't think any of us expected. There was a beautiful storm rolling in over Monument Valley. We stopped to appreciate the fantastic views, take some pictures, and we stayed as long as we could until the rain began to pour down on us. The rain made for a spectacular trip down the Mookie Dugway as well. Upon reaching the bottom, we continued to bluff ate some dinner and had a good conversation. Then we continued on to camp to see how the others had fared for the day. All right, we are here at Hell's Revenge. Uh, while we were airing down, a couple of fellow Jeepers, totally separate from our group and themselves, uh, came up individually and asked if there's any way they could join us. They were just here by themselves. Uh, they, it's pretty nice. They, yeah, they took the initiative to come over and just say, hey, we see your group, can we tuck in with you? So uh, we've got two extra Jeeps with us today. We're gonna put them in the middle of our convoy. I'll run tail gunner and uh, let's just see how this goes. So, really excited to check this out. Uh, Hell's Revenge, it starts right out of the parking lot. It looks amazing. Okay, so here we are at the entrance to Hell's Revenge in Moab, mm -hmm. Sand Flats Park. And uh, Emma is just, is driving. Oh my just God, started up I the don't hill, want to be so driving. Oh my just, God. Just uh, keep your foot easy on the gas. Yeah. Yeah, don't break, you won't need to break on this. So on this, we're gonna stay to the right. We're not going left, we're staying the right. It's slightly terrifying. Okay, to the left a little bit. Okay. So far, so good. Good, good. I'm the king of the world up there. <laughs> oh, my bad. King, queen, whatever. She'll take either one right now. <laughs> <laughs> Raindrop hit the windshield right on camera. Nothing I can do about that right now. Okay, Emma. Just slow roll it right on up. Follow the follow the tracks. Don't, oh, get, don't, don't get too far either side. And don't let off the gas. Just keep it, keep a steady pressure. Yeah, it was 
this one's pretty straight. Yeah. Let me get to the top bare left just a little bit. You're gonna get get a good nose down on this side, so. After the top of that hill, you'll come down, then there's a sharp right turn. Just watch the paint, and it's a smooth drop off on the other side. There's uh, just a, a smooth down. Cool. Foot off, okay. just keep going. I'm not, I'm not, I'm looking at the sky. Yeah, okay, the trail yeah. goes straight or to the left. Uh -huh. Okay, left. Looks like it was the shock mount. I think you're okay, brother. That's your hitch. Once you get up to the top up here, you can go to the right, which is the easier option, or you can keep going straight. So headed out an optional route and went to the River Overlook. It gives you an amazing view of the Colorado River. Overall, Hell's Revenge is approximately six and a half miles long and it's rated for experienced drivers due to some of the hazardous terrain. The scenery is absolutely breathtaking the entire way and it really isn't that hard of a trail, but I would say that some stock vehicles would likely have some difficulty. If you're ever in this area, this is absolutely one of the trails you have to do. Slow. Oh, this is not a way down. This is a cliff. I'm going to hit my down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is just a cliff. Just, it's just straight down. Oh, well, your dad's got you, right? Yeah, he is. But I feel like I'm gonna just like fall and hit him. He wouldn't have you do something you couldn't do. You're all good. Just go as slow as you need to. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Honestly, it looks like a cliff. <laughs> oh, it's. 
<laughs> it sure feels like one. see that smile on her face or not. Live to see another day! <laughs> Way to go, Emma! Like a clip up there. Oh yeah, it did, didn't it? That was great. Ultimately, we went ahead and wound our way back okay. out of Hell's Revenge the long way. It turned out to be yeah. the roughest part of the entire trail, the exit. It took us quite a while. You can see here in the distance, beautiful overlooks of Moab the entire way. Absolutely gorgeous. At the end of the trailhead, I guess I wasn't running the GoPro and uh, we pulled over Mike, Whoa. Emma, Mike's dad, Davis, uh, they all decided to head on into Moab, do a little bit of shopping and grab a bite of dinner. And Alex and I headed on to Fins and Things. We would meet up in camp later that night. But Mother Nature had a little bit of a surprise in store for all of us. All right, we just got off the trail for Hell's Revenge and Alex and I um, broke off from Mike, uh, because uh, they are going to head off to town and get some dinner. Uh, Alex and I, I think, are going to try to do dinner in camp, and we are going to try to check in and do fins and things real quick this evening if that works out. So we're this far, we're this close, and we just got to do it. It's funny, the rain has chased us all day long. Steep drop with a little ledge at the bottom. Got it. Oh, I feel bad for my back end. Did you get it again? I didn't hear it. Yep, got it. Yeah, look at the winds whip across the trail here. Came out of nowhere. The thunderstorm. I got toilet paper oh. on my mirror. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had it in my hand. I hope I can. I'm gonna let y'all wrap right here. All right, so the storm has moved in. It is whipping up something fierce. Um, at this point, I don't feel like safety is an issue yet. If we need to, we will pull over, ride it out. I don't know how long to expect this to be around. Um, but uh, right now it's just some high winds and some rain. So we should be all right carrying on for a bit longer. Short, steep, up. Steep, up. Steep, up. Go to the right a little bit at the top. Not hard, but a little bit to the right. Thank you. Here we have a 1949 arrival, which is 
still about an hour from now. While we missed being with the rest of the gathering of wanderers, it was a fantastic day. A huge shout out to Mike for literally hiking the entire Hell's Revenge and spotting our convoy the whole way. Another big shout out to Emma. It was her first major excursion behind the wheel off-road and she led our convoy with confidence all day long, ran the GoPro, ran the comms, kept us all in touch all day. It was fantastic. When we got back to camp, wasn't too bad. The winds and the rain had come through, but all was good. Overall, it was a phenomenal day and an overall fantastic trip. The fire truck rolling down the street. Here comes the fire truck. So what do everybody think? Awesome. Uh, awesome. Where's, where's, where's the most? Where's the? You're talking to the guy who knows there's a lot of video. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Way more video than he ever anticipated. <laughs> yeah, it was a blast. I can't wait to get together again. It's so nice to just get to see yep. so many faces that I don't know. You know, hear voices yeah. to go with faces that I have seen or yeah. whatever else. Just uh, yeah, really nice to get together and see everybody. Right and I thought this was a great place. It's a little campground. It's, yeah. It's it perfect. is. A, it's a good yeah. little campground. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's nice that you've got two group sites so you can accommodate other yeah. people. Totally. And all the rigs and everything yeah. else. Yeah. yeah. Very nice facilities. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's just kind of go around. What, what was your favorite thing um, that you did? And, and, and I'm going to say uh, Elephant Hill and Bobby's Hole uh, uh, to be able to do that route to kind of kick it off. Travis? Yeah, definitely. I'd say the same thing. Um, yeah, getting through Bobby's Hole was really nice. Um, and it was it was definitely, it's it's actually the first time I've gotten to do Elephant Hill with, with friends. You know, it's always been for, for work or something when I've been out there. Oh, that's a tough job. So, I'm, I'm yeah, sure. <laughs> right, it's, rough. it's rough. But it's more fun with friends, you know. Uh, I'm um, sure it is. And it's great because the, you know, I was with two friends that I, didn't know I had really, <laughs> you know. <laughs> never, never met them before. I mean, other than talking to them a lot hey, on you know, Dave, she didn't crazy. do a lot. You took some pictures and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I really didn't. <laughs> but I think the highlight of the whole trip for me was was today on where the tail was moving. Yeah. Watching Emma drive it for the first time. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. 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 Who's next down Eric, there? Eric. Oh, Mike. It's, uh, it's Eric. Oh, Eric. Eric. I, I, you describe my uh, hat choice here. You know. I, it's tough for me to say. I, I really enjoyed our orbit around uh, Combs Wash. Spoke with my spouse earlier today. Told her this is the first time I felt this happy since last February. Yeah. And it's uh, it's just been this is a bucket list thing, and uh, it's just been really cool to go through this. So, yeah. Uh, my favorite part, actually, and it sounds weird, is this campground, and the fact that it was so relaxing. I mean, I got here eight days ago, or, you know, or seven days ago before, when, of the start of this, and so I had opportunities to wheel in Moab, we did the, the Rim Rocker Trail, and, and, and but coming over to here and staying here in the woods, in the trees, and in the afternoon when no one else is here, sitting there and, and listening to the breeze come through the tall, tall pines, you know, read a book, Relaxed, took naps, which I never do, you know, and it, it's been a blast. I'm going to actually be sorry to, to lose that feeling when I leave. Yeah. Well, I think my my favorite part definitely was today getting to kind of really off-road for the first time in Hell's Revenge. It was very thrilling and very exciting, you know, nerve-wracking, all the, the fun feelings, and I felt very safe, though, you know, doing it with my dad. 
Because, like, I would I would never go off-roading by myself. Like, I'm glad I also don't have a car that can do that. Because now, after today, you know. <laughs> too much confidence. You're not, you're not going yeah. to <laughs> <going laughs> the Prius, huh? Like, yeah, I would not get very far in the Prius. But uh, I, I had a really great spotter, and I really enjoyed it. And I, I had a lot of fun. Good. Mike? Today. You know, today. Wa watching her, <laughs> watching her do her thing, it was, it was great. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Although the, the the rest of the trip and you know all the all the trails that we did, Mark and you know Bobby's Hole and Elephant Hill, those are all bucket list type things. And but watching her today, that was the that was a highlight. Brian, um, definitely probably taking the new rig down into the lower parking lot for Moon House. That was it was tight. It was very, he was very concerned that is a about very wide truck. A brand now, new now that place doesn't have a, a garage down there, does it? <laughs> no, no, it does not. But that was a lot of fun. And then following that up with, you know, climbing down into the canyon and back out. Yeah. And, you know, walking through the ruins and seeing something that's been there for 1,200 years. And that was really kind of awesome. Okay. And, and, and for the audience, uh, the sake of the audience, Explain what the truck is that you're talking about and its age. The, the truck is a now 637 miles on the odometer Ford F-150 Tremor. That he's on for absolutely... Three days. Three days. Yeah. <laughs> 2021. Yeah. Nicole? Yeah, so um, actually uh, the Mooley Point, that was really, really beautiful being able to look out across uh, Monument Valley and seeing the way that the river had carved so much of the canyon. and That, that was... It, even though it was maybe not the most, you know, challenging or anything like that, it was just gorgeous. It was just nice to sit there and center your thoughts. Yeah, that's, I need to get there one of these days. Yeah. Eric and I are going to get there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we talked about it, we just didn't find it. Yeah. Uh, John? That was Dean. Oh, Dean. I'm sorry. Uh, my favorite part, I think, would be yesterday, uh, wheeling Elephant Hill and then Bob's Hole. It's a, a style of wheeling I have not done yet. I've been wanting to do. Yeah, out here to the slip rock and uh, yeah, with my, my newish Jeep that I'm getting used to. I really enjoyed that. That was fun. Yeah. Well, Rowan, Rowan had much. a spot, I think. Rowan, what was your favorite spot? Um, the hiking was really fun because all the rock sculptures and stuff were super cool. Did you get to ride your dad's shoulders? No. She hiked the whole no. way, man. Did you really? She did. I'm proud of you. Yeah. yeah she well, and we. Yeah. And this was this was a hike where a lot of a lot of them turned back, and I was proud of her. She was. I thought she'd get scared, and she didn't. She just kept going, man. It was cool. All the way to Moonhouse and back. Good job, man. Yeah. Got the new snake. <laughs> and what about you, Mark? I started it off. Oh, you did start yeah. it off. You get two. You I get two. Yeah. <laughs> just just to be, be able to visit with all these, all these people. Most most of you I have met over the years and, and, and gone various places, but not quite all of us. You new faces huh? that I, I knew of, but I had not, never met face to face. I really appreciate that. And I think everybody feels the same way about that.
was looking at that trying to figure out if that was something important. <laughs> well, this was a great trip. We had a lot of fun and we did some real overlanding to get to Nizoni and one can uh, discuss whether doing Elephant Hill was overlanding or not, or Hell's Revenge. But it sure was a lot of fun, regardless. That was my second time, by the way, uh, to do Elephant Hill. The previous time I did it, I wasn't shooting any video. If you watch the video, Pure G Pell, a lot of that was shot at El uh, Elephant Hill. Anyway, studio chat. A few things I want to talk about. Well, the very first thing I want to talk about, because uh, people have asked me about it, is I. I I fell down uh, at Corkscrew Pass that was in the video. You, you see it the next morning when I get up. and I had quite a bit of pain for uh, uh, about a week, probably. Uh, you see later on I mentioned I was able to sleep on my left side, which I hadn't been able to do because that's the side that I landed on when I fell. I'm doing great. And uh, apparently it's just a pretty bruised rib. And uh, I have no problems at all. And here we are a few weeks afterwards now. Some other things I want to talk about. Uh, a couple of places to get special permits. Uh, Elephant Hill requires a special permit in order to drive out there. You see us refer to, we have to keep three vehicles uh, or fewer together. So we had to divide up into three groups. You have to get the permits right now, the day before, or you can pick them up that day if they're not all sold out the day before. You got to do it online through recreation.gov. I'm going to put a link uh, in the uh, video description with information about how to get the permits. The permits themselves are free, but recreation.gov charges you to use recreation.gov. And when you get a permit, only one vehicle goes on the permit. So you each have to pay recreation.gov their fee in order to get, you know, if you've got three vehicles traveling together in order to get three permits, you've got to pay recreation.gov for three uh, uses of their system. If you pick up the permits the next day, then you can go to the visitor center, which is open. You can go to the visitor center and you can pick them up there. We had done it the day before just to make sure. At 8 o'clock a.m. was when they opened and we started immediately online, everybody on their phone. That was one of the reasons, by the way, we wanted to stay in Monticello. We wanted to make sure that we had a, uh, a data signal uh, on the morning the day before in order uh, to request the permits. Moonhouse also requires special permits, but they're not done through the National Park Service, they're done through the BLM, but they also go through recreation.gov. You hear us refer to a maximum of 12 people. That's the amount they're allowed in a group, and then they issue a total of 20 permits a day. But our group size was limited to 12, so we could have actually gotten everybody in there, but we just had to go do it as two different groups. Well, what's the next thing I want to talk about? You may recall that uh, when I went to Nevada, I had some problems with a pretty severe vibration after I got back from Nevada, the NVBER had pretty uh, bad vibration in the Wrangler. That vibration was less so, but still continued on the Colorado Backcountry Discovery Route, even though I was doing the usual, trying to figure out what it is, balance the tires, rotate the tires, switch tires out, and take them you know, with a spare. You saw us do that. Actually, while we were on the cobbler, I had them help me. And uh, anyway, somewhere along the line I had this brilliant idea. I says, it's been a while since I've actually pulled my shocks out to check them. Let me do that. So <laughs> I pulled the driver front shock out. Totally no pressure in it. So I ordered a set of replacement shocks. I had had uh, Terraflex 9550 shocks before, years ago, when I first put the 2.5 inch lift in there at Wrangler. And when I pulled them out and replaced them, they were actually all still good. So I just went back to them. Okay, Wrangler skid plates, or actually one skid plate, the gas tank skid plate, and then the transmission cross member. The transmission cross member had gotten beaten up so bad that, that one of the uh, bolts for the skid plate that's under the transfer case wouldn't come out, and I had to cut it off with a cutoff tool. So I had a, a friend of mine, mechanic, uh, go ahead and replace that, and while he was in there, I also had him replace the... Uh, gas tank skid plate because it was pretty beat up and it, it was starting to uh, it was starting to split the metal where it had, it had been out of shape. The metal was actually turning into, you could see different layers of the metal and uh, rust damage. So I was a little bit concerned about my gas tank being on top of that and uh, possibly uh, doing some damage to the gas tank itself. So those have been replaced are in good shape and I crawled under there and looked after Elephant Hill and they looked just great. And uh, speaking of checking the vehicle over after I got back from Elephant Hill, 
I also had a broken uh, bump stop, and matter of fact, both front bump stops are uh, are uh, fell out, and they were on extensions for the uh, uh, from TerraFlex for the two and a half inch lift that I have in there. Those extensions had just fallen apart, and they both fell down to the bottom of the springs, and so there's no. I mean, the bump stops are in there, and they'll they'll stop it when it gets up so high, I suppose. But anyway. Uh, I have uh, I have new extensions to put in there, and I have the new replacement bump stops themselves, the actual bump stop member, OEM bump stop member, to stick in there. We use GMRS radios during the trip, and they're really popular. I would encourage everybody to consider going to GMRS. They work a lot better than the CB radios, but because they're popular, there's more people that you'll find on the channels. And so it's a good idea to have some procedures set up to change channels. When you... When you switch frequencies, it's a good idea to make sure, A, everybody knows before you, you go ahead and do it. So you make a call out, you say, let's go ahead and change frequencies, and you say, where are you going to change frequencies to? And you make sure everybody answers, yes, going to such and such. And then you go to the frequency, and you make sure everybody, when they arrive, announces mark on 4 or mark on 10 or whatever, whatever you're doing. Make sure everybody shows up. If somebody's missing, then the procedure is that you all return to the original channel that you last had good comms on. You don't go searching around trying to figure out what channel he went to because he misunderstood you. You all, after a minute or so, just automatically return to the original channel you were talking on before. So you go back there, and then finally he says, he says, okay, Jim's back on four, and then you say, hey Jim, uh, we were all trying to get over to 16, and you disappeared on us. He says, oh, I thought you said 17. I was on 17, and you get sorted out. Uh, mods on the Gladiator, I, I put a leveling kit, and or I, I should say I have my uh, mechanic put a leveling kit. I, I have difficulty, I, I used to do all the mods myself on the Wrangler, and uh, it's just as I've gotten older, uh, my strength has, has uh, sagged, and it's just very difficult for me to, uh, uh, to handle things like torquing bolts and stuff like that. So I just want to point out that in addition to the few drone shots that I contributed to this project, uh, Jenny was also a, a, a contributor in that regard. She's a good drone pilot, and so uh, I just kind of let her take over that when we stopped somewhere along the trail and, and let her get some of those neat shots you saw, like that, that abandoned house and that canyon. And Animus Forks also, she did that also. All right, another thing too, there's going to be two more special videos I'm going to put out related to this over the next few days. One is going to be the rigs that you saw that I've never done a, a rig talk about. So there'll be a special video con, uh, for those, and I've got, I, I don't know, half a dozen, maybe a couple more rigs, and the trailers also, uh, that we'll have special talks for. So that will be a video by itself instead of being incorporated into these already too long videos. And then the second thing will be a... a uh, special video I'm going to put together of the still shots that were shot by some of our photographers. Not the ones that you saw during these videos, or not very many of them anyway. There'll be a few of them that'll, that'll be in both places. But a lot of still shots that were really, really well done, but we just didn't use them in the video. And uh, so you'll, you'll see them, and, and they'll be a group five of photographers, so you'll get to see who shot what photographs and uh, gain an appreciation for the fact that I travel with a lot of pretty talented people with the camera. And the final thing that, I, that I've got is something that I wanted to do, but I didn't during the video. And that is that, uh, that morning camp near Del Norte at that uh, USFS site that we found up on that hill. And I, I've got, I, I did the drone shots where you can see us camp below and you can see off in the distance the hills and everything. And uh, you can see the, the grass being backlit by the sun on the other side of it, things like that. And... Uh, then at one point I talked to, uh, to Mike and his dad, Davis, and they're staring at their coffee. And I thought, oh, that's so funny the way they're staring at that coffee. And I wanted to put a caption in there or something like, you guys know us watch pot doesn't boil, don't you? <laughs> and, but I didn't want to ruin the mood that I was trying to set with this peaceful awakening of the earth as everybody's getting up and getting ready for a new day. So I chose to not put that in there. And I had a couple of people comment to me, man, he says that them guys turned that pot was pretty humorous. And I was like, yeah, I had the same feeling. And then it dawned on me that what I should have done was at the end, after that video, I should have taken that scene and repeated it and, and put the tagline there. 
So here for you is that. So how's the how's the coffee coming along? It's just about ready. It's oh. uh, got a little steam coming out there, so I'll get mixed up here in a minute. Uh -huh. Got to have that coffee. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> so that about does it. Once again, if you check the video description, you'll see links to the Elephant Hill permitting process and to the Moonhouse permitting process. And I should add that uh, Bobby's Hole, the BLM lands, USFS lands, uh, they don't require any special permits. That about does it. So, tread lightly, explore your world.